Hello, everybody. Today is day nine. Day nine. The day before the end of this particular program. I hope everyone is having a successful time of it. A uh, few of you are struggling a little bit, but that's that's okay. That's normal. That's normal. And, and this is my philosophy. If you struggle during one episode, the very next eating situation, try to get back on it to finish strong. Finish strong. If we didn't do the things that we were supposed to over the course of the last several days, today is day eight. Let's see if we're 100% compliant today and then 100% compliant tomorrow. Even if you're not seeing the kind of weight that you want to lose right now, your health is being impacted by what you're doing. So please don't give up on the things that you want just because your weight is not moving the way that you want. Um, mine didn't move for over a year and a half. <laughs> let that sink in <laughs> and I coach a lot of people in, in a little group of mine and they are losing weight left and right and you know I'll lose and I'll lose 15 20 pounds and then here comes steroids and then I gain 15 pounds in less than three days and try to get off it and then feel sorry for myself and go to a restaurant and eat something and gain a little bit more. Then I'll spend a long time getting those little 15, 20 pounds off. And then the cycle continues. It happens to us. It does. Um, the things that are put in food, oil, salt, sugar, those three things, especially in processed food, they're designed to make us want more. They're designed to make us continue to go after that stuff. Um, you know, a lot of doctors talk about those dopamine hits that we get when we eat those kinds of things on a regular basis. And it's almost addicting, if not definitely addicting. And, and it's hard sometimes to get that stuff out of our system. That's why when we do, you do programs like Mary's Mini, that helps us to sort of get those things out of our system um, in a way. Uh, I don't know how many of you follow Dr. Doug Lyle. He's a psychologist, but he does have um, a little situation where he talks about what happens to people when they find themselves in this state of uh, cognizant um, dis dissonance is what it's called. It's where you do something and you know you're not supposed to do it and then you end up feeling really bad because you did it but then for some reason you do it again and then you end up with that cognitive dissonance again because you start feeling bad about what you've done and then you're in this total state of feeling bad about your decisions on a regular basis. He um he wrote a book called The Pleasure Trap, um, a along with a another um, colleague of his. I can't remember the, um, the other doctor, but there are two of them who wrote that book. And he, he has this chart in it uh, where, where he explains what happens to us when we get caught in the middle of that eating thing, when we get caught in the middle of uh, getting stuck with all of that junk food in our system and in our brain. He has these stages that he talks about. So he says that, uh, and he starts them off with someone who actually is following a really good whole food plant-based diet and you're moving along and you're moving along and then all of a sudden you, you start tasting some things that you're not supposed to have. So when you're moving along the way that you're supposed to, you're in what he calls phase one. So phase one is we're eating well, we're doing well, and we feel good about what we're doing. And then all of a sudden, something happens. We go to a potluck or we um, the holidays come upon us and we start with the mindset of moderation won't hurt. I can have a little and then I can have a little more. And those of us who have had that addictive reaction to those things with the salt, 
sugar and oil and all that processed stuff is going to start hitting our brains in a certain kind of way. And so we taste a little and taste a little and then before we know it, we're, we're wanting more. And then we end up finding ourselves in what he calls phase two, where we're just enjoying what is going on with us because those dopamine hits are, are getting to us left and right and we're just in this state of euphoria because yeah, this feels right. All this bad stuff really, really feels right. But then after a, a period of time, um, when you start doing that, then that starts feeling normal again. We don't get the dopamine hits anymore. It almost feels like, okay, this is my norm. This is the way it's supposed to be. You know, when we're still that, that uh, initial moderation thing has put us into a new state of normal where we feel like it's okay for us to have this processed stuff and this um, all these things with the sugar, salt, and oil that draws us in so much. And then that's where some of us start to feel like, you know, we start to feel bad physically. You know, our brains are saying, okay, this is kind of normal, but I've got to get back to what I know I need to do. But that's when it's kind of hard because you, then you go into stage four. And then stage four is where you're fighting to try to get back to a whole foods plant-based diet or a, a really good regimen as far as your eating is concerned. Um, and then it starts feeling weird again because it's like it's good for you, but it doesn't feel good. It feels like something's not right. And that's where you struggle. And he says a lot of people never make it out of stage four because you know, you, you were in stage one, you were going along, and so we can equate that to, you know, you're doing the Mary's Mini, and, and you've finally gotten your taste buds where you're not wanting some of that stuff anymore, and it's easier for you to say, you know, I, okay, I can do without this, and then you, you put yourself into that stage two, um, where it's just exciting, 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 but then stage three, it's like, Okay, I need more and more because I'm not getting as much as I, I was getting before as far as the dopamine hits, hits are concerned, but that's stage four. Stage four is where you're wanting to get back to where you were. You're wanting to get back to a whole foods plant-based diet. Um, you Your brain knows that this is where you need to be, but then you're still drawn to those other things because of the physiological response that we have to that addictive quality of the sugar, salt, and oil that, you know, in a processed foods and all that kind of stuff. He says that a person is really lucky if they're stuck in stage four and then they start watching things like Forks Over Knives and Plant Pure Nation and a lot of those videos that we know are out there. That's when that person begins to read certain things, you know, certain books such as The Start Solution and, you know, start looking at videos of the superstars in this area, you know, Dr. Barnard, Dr. McDougall, of course, um, Dr. Greger, uh, Dr. T. Colin Campbell, you know, all of the superstars associated with the a whole foods plant-based diet. Um, and so if you can and immerse yourself in those things that you know are good for you, while you're stuck in that stage four where you're kind of feeling bad and wanting those things and the cravings are so hard, um, that is a good spot for people to do something like a Mary's Mini. Because if you're stuck in that stage four and you're still dabbling with a little bit of this and dabbling with a little bit of that, it's hard to get out of stage four. But when you put yourself in a very limited program, 10 days, very limited program, like a Mary's Mini, that gives you just a couple of rules. <laughs> Pick your starch, eat as much non-starchy vegetables as you want, then you're more apt to sort of begin to claw yourself out of stage four and to begin to get back into stage five, which is where you're feeling good about things, you're 
you're on a good path to your whole foods plant-based regimen and you you start your brain is starting to accept it more and you're feeling good about it and then you're moving along um if you have not read that book the pleasure trap it is an awesome book uh, to read, but it's a book of psychology rather than weight loss, but it does talk to us about why we make some of the decisions that we make. You know, sometimes we'll, we'll be doing so well, sometimes. Um, you're, you're going three and four days, you're, you're making great choices, you're being fully compliant, and then all of a sudden you're driving your car and then some force takes your car and makes it pull into some type of a place to, you know, get something to eat. I remember when, when I used to do that from time to time um, and, and my brain would just say, ooh, I can get something vegan over there, you know, you know, Taco Bell, ooh, I can get something vegan right there, you know, and, and go over here and go over there. But vegan does not always equate to something that's healthy for you because some of the vegan fairs that we know are out there are also filled with those things such as sugar, salt, and oil. And that's what keeps drawing us back. I read a meme yesterday and it goes something like this. It says, don't sacrifice the things that you want the most for the things that you want now. Don't sacrifice those things that you want the most for what you want now. So if this force causes you to pull up into something or to go to a store or to grab that bag of chips or something like that, there's a little battle that occurs. And if we can win more of those battles than we lose, then we're on the right track. And I've had a few of those battles. Uh, it hasn't been all peaches and cream with me during these series of Mary's Minis. I've had a few of those battles, but I've had this little, um, this, uh, this, this, this thing in my back pocket that says, is it a starch? Is it a non-starchy vegetable? Then you can't have that, you know. And and when I, even when I do uh, the program for maximum weight loss, there are still many more options than there are with a, a Mary's Mini. So when I'm doing this little thing called a Mary's Mini, if I can put it into those two categories and say, does it fit? And if it does not, then I don't do it. And the pro, the, it's paying off for me is paying off. I wore something yesterday that I had not worn in a long time. I was cute. And I got some comments at work too. And that's kind of nice when people make comments, you know? <laughs> I'm really looking forward to my way out on Thursday. I think I, I this was a pretty successful round for me. And so if, if you have been compliant most of this past uh, eight or nine days, if you've been eight days, if you've been compliant most of this time and you might have messed up a few times, it's okay. Just be as compliant as you can today and tomorrow. Just try your best to do it. It's worth it. It's, it's so worth it. One thing that I tell people sometimes, why did you start this? What, what's the reason why you started? What is your why? If you know without a shadow of a doubt what your why is, write it down. Spend some time today and write down your why. And then after you know and you, you've written it down and you know exactly why you're doing this, whenever you get ready to start to do something that you know is not compliant or you know is not going to work toward your success, go pick that thing up that you wrote and say to yourself, is this contributing to what I want to achieve because of my why? I know my why, and, and I'm going to try my best to keep at this until I, I'm in a, a healthy weight. And so, because my, my numbers are great, I just want them to stay that way. And when you get over 60, and I'm gonna be 60 in a couple of months, when you get over 60, your body is not as forgiving when it comes to obesity, even if all the other stuff is going well. So. All right, guys, I'm not going to go over 15 minutes because I don't want to go over <laughs> with that stuff that happened yesterday <laughs> with my uh, video. So I will talk to y'all again tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>